We've talked about chemical reactions, but what exactly happens when species are reacting with each other? And how do reactions depend on the quantity of each reactant present? In the last video, we investigated the concept of limiting reagents. In this video, we'll put everything together as we work through a full problem. We'll follow these steps as we go. Say we mix 60 grams of calcium hydroxide reacting with 20 grams of hydrogen fluoride. A precipitate, calcium fluoride, will be produced along with water. Our goal is to predict the mass of the calcium fluoride product, assuming that the reaction goes to completion. We know that we will follow the recipe we discussed in the previous video on limiting reagents, but we first need to build our initial container. First things first, we have to make sure the equation is balanced. In this case, we've been given the balanced chemical equation, so we can move on to step two. The second step when solving these types of problems is to convert the starting amounts to moles. What is the molar mass, the mass of one mole, of calcium hydroxide? To get the molar mass of calcium hydroxide, we'll add up the atomic mass of calcium, the atomic mass of oxygen, multiplied by two, and the atomic mass of hydrogen, also multiplied by two. The resulting value is the molar mass of calcium hydroxide, 74.0927 grams per mole. This means that one mole of calcium hydroxide molecules weighs 74.0927 grams. How many moles of calcium hydroxide are there in 60 grams of calcium hydroxide? We start with the 60 grams of calcium hydroxide, what we have, and then we use the molar mass to convert to moles we get 0 0.810 moles of calcium hydroxide. To help us keep track of our work, let's sketch a container and put our 0 0.810 moles of calcium hydroxide in the container. Doing this for all of the substances will help us to translate the problem from words into a picture that guides us. After all, working memory is very limited. If you spend too much effort remembering the things in the problem, you will have little bandwidth left to solve the problem. How many moles of hydrogen fluoride do we add to our container? We'll use the molar mass of hydrogen fluoride to determine the number of moles of hydrogen fluoride present in our container. The molar mass of hydrogen fluoride is 20.006 grams per mole. When we use this to convert to moles, we get that we have 1.00 mole of hydrogen fluoride in our container. Now we have containers that fully describe the initial state of our system. We now need to figure out how much of these react. We start by determining the limiting reagent. As we saw previously, this means we take each reactant separately and use that to predict the maximum amount of one product that is made. Let's start with calcium hydroxide and see how much calcium fluoride we can make, assuming that we have infinite amounts of hydrogen fluoride. Assuming the reaction goes to completion, how many moles of calcium fluoride can form from 0 0.810 moles of calcium hydroxide? From the balanced equation, we see that we need one mole of calcium hydroxide to form one mole of calcium fluoride. When we use this as the conversion factor, we get that 0 0.810 moles of calcium fluoride forms from 0 0.810 moles of calcium hydroxide. Now let's do the same step for hydrogen fluoride. Assuming we had an infinite amount of calcium hydroxide, how many moles of calcium fluoride can form from one mole of hydrogen fluoride? We can see the relationship between hydrogen fluoride and calcium fluoride in the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of hydrogen fluoride are required to make one mole of calcium fluoride. When we use this relationship as the conversion factor, we get that 0 0.500 moles of calcium fluoride forms from one mole of hydrogen fluoride. Based on what we've just calculated, which species in this reaction is the limiting reagent? The limiting reagent is the one that runs out first, and so it's the one that produces the least amount of product. From the previous steps, we see that hydrogen fluoride runs out first because one mole of hydrogen fluoride forms only 0 0.500 moles of calcium fluoride. This means that hydrogen fluoride is our limiting reagent. The amount of calcium fluoride formed in this reaction depends on the amount of hydrogen fluoride present. So now we can determine the amount of calcium fluoride formed in this reaction. Because it's the limiting reagent, we only consider the amount of hydrogen fluoride when calculating the amount of calcium fluoride formed. 
What is this amount in grams? We already calculated that the amount of calcium fluoride formed from one mole of hydrogen fluoride is 0.5 moles. When we multiply this amount with the molar mass of calcium fluoride, which is 78.0748 grams per mole, we get that the amount of calcium fluoride formed is 39.0 grams. We can also figure out the amount of water formed in this reaction. What is it in grams? Once again, we'll use the amount of hydrogen fluoride present in the reaction to determine the amount of water formed in the reaction. The relationship between hydrogen fluoride and water is as follows. Two moles of hydrogen fluoride are needed to produce two moles of water. We'll use this conversion next. If we were to multiply everything out, our answer would tell us the number of moles of water produced. But we want the amount in grams, so we have one more step, multiplying by the molar mass of water. The molar mass of water is 18.0153 grams per mole, so once we multiply everything out, we'll get that 18.0 grams of water forms from one mole of hydrogen fluoride. So in our final container, we now have 0 moles of hydrogen fluoride, and so 0 grams, 0 0.5 moles of calcium fluoride, which is 39.0 grams, and 1 mole of water, or 18 grams. Because hydrogen fluoride was the limiting reagent, that means that calcium hydroxide is the species in excess. How much calcium hydroxide in moles is left over in the container once the reaction goes to completion? To determine the amount of calcium hydroxide used in this reaction, we'll have to work backwards. We know that 0.500 moles of calcium fluoride are produced, and we know that the ratio of calcium fluoride to calcium hydroxide is 1 to 1. So 0.500 moles of calcium hydroxide are consumed. Be careful here. The amount that we've just calculated is the amount of calcium hydroxide used in this reaction to make our products. To calculate the amount of calcium hydroxide left over, we'll simply subtract 0.500 moles used from the initial amount of 0.810 moles. We get that we have 0.310 moles of calcium hydroxide left over once the reaction goes to completion. If we want to know how many grams that is, we multiply by the molar mass of calcium hydroxide to get 23.0 grams of calcium hydroxide left. That's it, we followed our steps and that's what we have in the final state of our container.